The Buzz on Bees, Why Are They Disappearing? by Shelley Rotner and Ann Woodhull with photographs by Shelley Rotner. One beautiful morning in 2006, professional beekeeper Dave Hackenberg went on a routine check of his hundreds of hives, but something was different. When he lifted the first cover, he discovered the hive was empty. As he continued lifting cover after cover, he was surprised to find that all of the hives were empty. Dave listened for buzzing honeybees, but all he heard was silence. There were no bees. There were no dead bees either. I've been a beekeeper for over 50 years, and I've never seen anything like it, Dave said. I came to pick up 400 hives and discovered thousands of bees had just flat out disappeared. Dave started talking to other beekeepers across the country. He learned that they were finding their hives empty too. The mystery started making the news. People were shocked to learn that in just four years, about one third of the honeybees in the United States had disappeared without a trace. Why is the loss of something as small as a honeybee such a big deal? We know that honeybees make honey, but we can live without honey. However, honeybees do something much more important. They pollinate. Pollen is a yellow powder found in flowers, and sometimes it can make you sneeze. It is necessary to help grow new plants. As a honeybee buzzes from flower to flower, collecting nectar to make honey, grains of pollen stick to its body. When the bee lands on another flower, some of the pollen rubs off. This process is called pollination. When a plant is pollinated, it can make new plants. Bees help deliver pollen so that pollination can happen. Native bees, known as wild bees, pollinate too and are also disappearing. Unlike honeybees that work in a hive, most native bees work on their own. They make individual nests, usually in trees, under the ground, or in leaf stems. In order for a strawberry plant to grow strawberries, or an apple tree to grow apples, Pollen needs to be transferred from one plant to another. Honeybees and other bees help deliver the pollen so that pollination can happen. Honeybees are master pollinators. We can thank them for about one out of every three mouthfuls of food that we eat. Without bees, but especially without honeybees, there would be fewer cantaloupes, cucumbers, blueberries, peppers, broccoli, soybeans, watermelons, peaches, tomatoes, pumpkins, onions, and almonds. So many of the fruits, nuts, and vegetables we eat depend on honeybees for pollination. Honeybees also pollinate the cotton plants we need to make our shirts and jeans, and they pollinate clover, which is eaten by sheep, cows, and goats. These animals provide us with meat and milk. From milk, we make cheese and butter. Bees are not the only pollinators. Birds and bats pollinate, so do beetles and other insects. Ponds, lakes, rivers, and a good rain shower can also carry pollen from one plant to another. So can wind. Honeybees are the most important bees in modern agriculture. Their massive workforce pollinates the largest variety of crops. They are easy to manage and easy to move. Some leave their hives and survive on their own. Besides honeybees, there are more than 4,000 species of native bees in North America that pollinate as well. Some of these bees are especially good at pollinating specific crops. The bumblebee has an extra hairy coat so it can collect nectar on cold days. It lives in a small colony and is the only pollinator of the potato flower. Carpenter bees chew perfectly round holes in wood to make nests to raise their young. They are excellent pollinators of eggplants and tomatoes. Leafcutter bees, on the right, make their nests by cutting leaves. Using round pieces of leaves, they seal the holes that are filled with eggs, nectar, and pollen. Mining bees make holes in the ground from one inch to several feet deep. They put eggs, nectar, and pollen at the end of these holes and seal them until the new bees are born. The sweat bee, on the right, likes to land on your skin and lick the salt there, but will not sting unless provoked. It helps pollinate blueberry and watermelon plants. Besides pollinating many plants in the wild, Honeybees help pollinate more than 90 different kinds of crops on both small and large farms. The Macluries in Vermont are beekeepers on a fairly small scale. They have about 25 hives. They raise bees primarily for their honey, but they also make beeswax candle and honey soaps. 
their bees pollinate flowers and vegetables within five miles of their home. Larger farms, made up of hundreds of acres, usually grow only one crop and need thousands of hives. Beekeepers such as Dave Hackenberg transport their bees all over the country to pollinate these large crops. Beekeepers wear protective suits so they don't get stung as they load the hives onto huge flatbed trucks. This happens in the cool of the evening when the bees return to their hives to rest. The bees are then moved from place to place and job to job, following crops as they bloom. A truckload of Pennsylvania bees might start by pollinating almonds in California, then travel back across the country to pollinate apples in New York, blueberries in Maine, and pumpkins in New Jersey. New York's apple crop requires 30,000 hives. Maine's blueberry crop needs 50,000 hives, and California's almond crop requires one and a half million hives. Each hive is home to between 10,000 and 60,000 honeybees. At different times in history, beekeepers have reported losses, but nothing as widespread as the decline in honeybees since 2004. Scientists call this Colony Collapse Disorder, or CCD. Beekeepers and scientists are working together to solve this mystery. They are examining healthy and sick bees to try and figure out why bees are more fragile today than in the past. What are the factors causing honeybees to disappear? Most research has been done on honeybees, but native bees have been declining as well. There are many theories, but no one knows for sure. Since honeybees have a delicate immune system, most beekeepers and scientists agree their health can be affected by many factors. Are honeybees in a weakened state, unable to fight off disease? They are becoming sick with a variety of ailments caused by viruses, bacteria, fungi, and parasites such as the varroa mite. Varroa mite. Are honeybees getting sick from contact with other bees? Honeybees are often shipped from place to place. Are they exposed to new diseases that they take home and spread to local bees? Can bees shipped from other countries bring new diseases as well? Is long distance transporting putting too much stress on the bees? Perhaps when bees are enclosed while traveling in trucks, they do not get enough water or cannot regulate the temperature in their hives. They are easily affected by changes in temperature, and there are big temperature changes between Maine and California. How do drugs affect the health of honeybees? Some honeybees are given antibiotics to help prevent diseases. This helps them fight infection, but it can cause them to lose important bacteria they need to digest food. What about diet? Some honeybees are fed sugar water and corn syrup as supplements or substitutions for their natural diet. How does this affect their health? What about the loss of habitat? When urban development, with urban development, there is less vegetation. Bees are losing some of their food sources. When large farms keep expanding, planting acres of one kind of plant, we lose plant diversity. How will bees find well-balanced sources of food? What about global warming? Rising temperatures changes can mean that there is less water and food available for bees. Where will bees thrive? What about air pollution? We know that people's health can be affected by air pollution. What effect does this have on bees? Does pollution also affect the ability of bees to find the fragrance of flowers? What about electromagnetic fields? Do cell phones and cell towers interfere with bees' navigation systems, causing them to lose their way back to their hives? What about chemicals? Pesticides are often sprayed on crops to kill insects. Honeybees are insects too. Are they being poisoned by their contaminated food sources? Many chemicals used for fertilization have leached and mixed into our soil and water. Are the bees' immune and navigation systems affected by ingesting these chemicals? What are scientists doing to help solve this mystery? Some are investigating native and imported bees to see if they are, they are more disease-resistant and adaptive to the environment. If so, these bees might help do the jobs that honeybees do. Others are studying environmental factors that might compromise the survival of the bee, including the effects of global changes as well as manufactured chemicals and pesticides. Some believe that honeybees are disappearing because they, carry, they catch viruses such as the flu or other diseases and become too weak to recover. Scientists have been feeding honeybees supplemental vitamins to see if this can help strengthen their immune systems and general health. The mystery of the disappearing bees may be a warning. Different kinds of bees have been on Earth for more than 65 million years since the days of the dinosaurs. But now, 
Bees are in trouble, their future unknown. When so many honeybees begin to disappear, we have to ask the bigger question, how healthy is our earth? Bees, just like us, need good food, clean water, and clean air to stay healthy. All life depends on many parts working together. Bees are small, but they can make a big difference in our large world. What can we do? Be active. There is so much we can do. Encourage your parents to become beekeepers. This will help the honeybee population growing. As Ask your family and friends to support local beekeepers and to buy locally grown foods, which don't have to be trucked long distances. This cuts down on pollution and uses less fuel and produces fewer emissions. Plant a vegetable garden. There will be more flowering plants to feed bees. Local gardens cut down the need to transport food. This cuts down on pollution and fuel consumption. Support local beekeepers. Use honey instead of sugar. It is the most environmentally friendly and healthy sweetener. Plant a bee garden. Some flowers that bees especially like are black-eyed Susans, California poppies, forget-me-nots, sunflowers, and coneflowers. Encourage your parents to buy foods that have grown organically, without chemicals and insecticides. Plant meadows instead of lawns. Plant and organize with your community to create wildscapes in public places. Not only will you help feed bees, but also your town will look more beautiful. Avoid spraying pesticides to control weeds and insects. Plant flowers that will bloom at different times so that your bees will have food all summer long. Invite your local beekeeping organization to speak at your school. Talk to your friends, your class, and your community to spread the words that bees need help now. The Buzz on Bees by Shelley Rotner and Anne Woodhull with photographs by Shelley Rotner. And this is EDU Kids Space. Subscribe for more books, stories, and lessons. And if there's something in particular you'd like to learn about, leave us a message in the comments.